Now that we've smashed through Roadblock, it's time to be on the proper road to WrestleMania. We begin with the League of oh, the Lads against the New Day. This time, it's Del Rio and Rusev. The sad thing is, League of Nations should be over, but they were put together to be fed to Roman Reigns. So, even though you've got every member has held singles gold, you've got two former kings in the ring, two former world heavyweight champions, a guy who went undefeated for a really long stretch of time. They've all been people who were fed to John Cena to make him look stronger, and now they've got fed to Roman Reigns. They just, they don't gel. They don't gel at all. Taking on the newly dubbed faces of professional wrestling in the New Day. New Day did the numbers advantage. Okay. They, they won. Roll a handful of tights. Great. The faces be cheating, yo. Then four on three beat down. All right. Apparently it's not over. Why? Continuing tag team stuff. The Usos took out a team that I didn't know who it was for at first. The Social Outcast. Oh, didn't know Bodath had a singlet. Didn't know that Adam Rose had an outfit like that. They get invited to the Usos' super kick party. Everyone took super kicks. It's almost like they're trying to mimic the elite. There are two young bucks who are well known for throwing super kick parties. While the Dudleys are on the outside doing the Dudley thing. So I guess Usos does give me a thing again. On the women's side, Charlotte had a promo. She's going to air some dirty laundry. Because women have to be catty and petty about stuff. Not a bad promo. It's a promo to set up a promo. To set up the match. Alicia Fox and Brie took on Naomi and Tamina in a match that involved Brie and Alicia Fox taking on Tamina and Naomi. On the bright side, Naomi and Tamina have a tag team finisher, which is good. I like that. Lana came out in her I want Dolph Ziggler looking gear. Okay. I'm not digging Lana Bree. I'm not. Sorry. And then to make it more awkward, Paige looking like the Union Jack version of, I think her name was Sindel from Mortal Kombat, gets into a conversation with Jojo, who had the mic down, so what do you think you're saying? And then Lana's talking. I'm like, Jojo, mic up. Mic up. Mic up. Lana's gonna be like, you know something, Paige. She's not gonna lean forward like two feet. And so I was like, you've had your first match, sweetheart. I'm like, alright. You challenge to do match next week on, next week on Raw? You know what I mean? To me, we're like, yo. Better be careful who you're who we talking about. All of them might be hearing you. What? The Divas Division is both booked beautifully and horribly at the exact same time. Dean Ambrose cut a wicked promo on the mic about how Triple H underestimated him, didn't respect him. Didn't think it was a challenge, and he almost and he almost beat him. But his foot was out of the ropes. Great. Paul Heyman Lesnar comes out. He goes doesn't come out of the ring. Ambrose opens his jacket, pulls out freaking crowbar. And he's like, "Come on, go, let's go." Street fight. I'm already picturing that fight's gonna have like a taser. It's gonna be like a taser and dirty deeds, or. He's going to be holding two tasers with the underhook for the Dirty Deeds. Just <laughs> Lesnar, and he might suck it out too, because he's Lesnar. And then the back McFoley shows up, because this is where they did the Hell in a Cell spot in. And McFoley symbolically passes the torch to Ambrose, which means Ambrose is not going to win big matches. But dang it, the crowd's going to love him. 
It's got mannerisms that no one else has. He holds the mic from the bottom. From the bottom. Dean Ambrose is Dean Ambrose. This is who he is. Of course, he gives him a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire. I'm like, man, you better light that sucker up in Dallas. And you better get ready, because... Lesnar might get hit with a flaming baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire. I bet you anything. He can get a hold of that. And yeah, he's going to hit you with it, Dean. And the crowd is going to love you so much, Dean. Authority came out and cut a, your life sucks because you don't have the guts to stand against the authority. But it shows up against the authority because we're pretty awesome. And he kept on saying Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. And Dolph Ziggler comes out and he's like, these people are like me and Dean Ambrose. Yeah. When Roman Reigns isn't around, you toss him Dolph Ziggler. But Ziggler will lose. So together, they make a pretty good wrestler. Reigns gets all the wins. His other half, Ziggler, you know, the shadow of Reigns, loses all the time. Steph's like, oh, you want to shot at Mania? Yeah. Be in any match you want. Except for the heavyweight championship match. This guy won one match. Against Triple H. Boyaka. And they put on a solid match. H made Ziggler look phenomenal. Did a great job with that. Famouser ate a super kick, really made it seem like he was going to win. Downside of that, of course, is Ziggler doesn't win almost at all. So H made him look really strong means that when Roman Reigns basically beats him, he's not going to look as strong. And of course, after Triple H violently defeats Dolph Ziggler, walking down the ramp, not in flag jacket, comes a noticeably small Roman Reigns, who then begins to fight the game. Eventually they go into the back where H is busted open. H has got a chair, but Roman Reigns throws a plastic garbage can, disarming Triple H, and then hits him with the TV. Had it been Dean Ambrose, the TV would explode in his hands. But this is Roman Reigns, where he's going to hit H with the TV. And then the Usos show up to stop him, and street clothes Jack Swagger. And Mark Henry. The crowd audibly booed when Roman Reigns' music hit. Like, Boo! And beat down there like, eh. Had he had come down like mid-match, distracted Triple H, Triple H would have eaten a zigzag, one, two, three, Ziggler gets his match in Mania, H is livid, then he would be down H. Would have felt a lot better than, you just had a really great hard-fought match. I want to play the heel to your face and attack you afterwards. Neville took on Jericho. He went to do a go underneath, the like slide. Well, so he caught his ankle. I haven't read in their cheats if he's injured or not. Which then led to Jericho pulling an audible by trying to go for a roll up, which the ref didn't count. And Jericho then pushed the ref. And then had it again run on AJ Styles by cutting the exact same promo the authority cut about, I am the boss in this ring, you need to know your place. It's awkward. Then it got even more awkward. The Shane McMahon promo with The Undertaker and Vince was just horrible. Because you're going to swing, and I'm going to miss. You're going to miss. Shane, stop talking. Your body's going to be so full of oxygen, and it's just going to burn. He just told a dead man that his body will be full of oxygen that's going to burn. It was a horrible promo. It just seemed to go on. It's already a match. It's like, it's going to be a cluster. So there's already trepidation about how the match is going to play out. Trepidation about the two people in the ring. And how the match is going to physically play out. 
Now we have bad promos. Nothing about this match is running well. The only advantage is hopefully, maybe just hopefully, because this is one of the two matches that are going to help end the authority's reign. Xavier gets involved and Xavier attacks Undertaker. You know, have him do something. I mean, uh, this is a rough episode of Raw to get through. The road to WrestleMania. It's got some more steps ahead of it. It's looking pretty rough.